As you watch this teaching, I would like to ask you to please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it. This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. My name is Rick Renner, and I'm in the ancient city of Smyrna, which was a large city in the Roman province of Asia. And during the time of the New Testament, Paul ministered nearby in the city of Ephesus. And either Paul came here himself or he sent workers here to establish the church in this city, the city of Smyrna. And right now, I'm sitting in one of the underground passageways that runs under the state Agora, which was the largest Agora. It was the largest state marketplace in the entire Roman world. It was magnificent and it was massive. And it was the site of a lot of horrific persecution. We know that believers were dragged into the open courtyard, humiliated, even executed for their faith. And in these underground passageways, there are records that tell us believers were also dragged here. They were stoned, they were killed, they were martyred for their faith. This was a city where believers were dying because they stood for Jesus. And Jesus referred to this in Revelation chapter 2 when he spoke to the pastor and to the church of Smyrna. Listen to the words of Jesus. Revelation chapter 2, Jesus said, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil will cast some of you into prison. Jesus made it very clear that these sufferings were not the will of God. It was the devil. It was the devil trying to extinguish the light of the gospel. The devil knew if the gospel really broke loose, revival would come to this city, which is eventually exactly what happened. But the devil was going to attempt to put the light of the gospel out and Jesus said, you need to know the devil's going to come after you. But then the following verse, Jesus said to him who overcomes, he will receive a crown of life. Overcomes in Greek really says to him who's in the process of overcoming. Overcoming is not just something we did once in our past. It's a way of life. We've got to determine it doesn't matter what life brings or what the devil tries to do, what the devil tries to throw at us. We are bigger than any odds that can come against us. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And we are overcomers. Not those who overcame in the past. Right now, today, tomorrow, for the rest of our life, we're living to be overcomers. We have that ability because the light of God is in us. And for those who overcome, Jesus promises rewards. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Right now, I'm seated near where the big Roman double port of Smyrna was once located. And ships came into this port every day, bringing people to shop in the city and to do business, and also carried religious pilgrims who particularly came here to worship in the temple of Sybil. The city of Smyrna was dark. In fact, this city was so spiritually dark that Jesus told believers in Revelation 2:10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried. And you'll have tribulation 10 days, be thou faithful unto death. Many believers lost their lives in Smyrna. Many were killed in the large marketplaces, which I'll show you very soon. But when a newcomer disembarked here at the port, he could travel directly into the heart of the city on one of several wonderful roads. 
But the most historical road of the city was a street called the Sacred Way. It began at the port and continued all the way up the slopes of the city to the very peak of Mount Pagos. This street was so ancient that even in the first century, it was considered one of the oldest roads in the entire world. It was lined with covered colonnades that were filled with shops and walkways. And it was considered sacred because it was lined with many temples and a seemingly limitless number of idols and a glut of altars where people made sacrifices to pagan gods. But then there was also the Street of Gold. History states, that the street of gold from a distance gave the appearance of a lovely necklace wrapped around a neck as it graciously curled around the lower slopes of the city. It was lined with elegant buildings on each side and the neck was supposedly the neck of the goddess Sybil in whose image the entire city was allegedly created. One ancient writer wrote, stand on the Acropolis and you will see that the sea flows beneath you. The suburbs lie about you. The city through three lovely views fills the goblet of your soul. Everything to the very shore is a shining mass of gymnasiums, markets, theaters, baths, so many that you hardly know where to bathe, fountains and public walks, and there's running water in every home. The abundance of spectacles, contests, and exhibitions is beyond telling, and the variety of handicrafts is amazing. Of all cities, this is best suited for those who like to live at ease. And the historian Strabo wrote that the city had large porticos with lower and upper stories, a librarian, and a homerium, which was a shrine to Homer that contained a wooden statue of the poet to commemorate his alleged birth nearby at the River Meles. Strabo even wrote that the harbor was technologically advanced. And all of these descriptions tell us that Smyrna was sophisticated and cultured and a city that possessed the highest technology available at that time. Right now, I'm seated on the ruins of the central agora in the middle of Smyrna. This place was amazing. Look at the ruins of these capitals and how they're so beautifully carved in the Corinthian style. And you walk through these ruins and you see such intricate work. My friends, this was an amazing place. Three sides of this market was 54 feet deep it had multiple levels, multiple, multiple columns, and they were 225 feet long. And the entire marketplace was filled with monuments and pagan idols. And for that reason, it really was a pagan shrine. Many of those idols today are visible in the Izmir Archaeological Museum. This was simply an amazing, breathtaking place. The floor which now is covered with grass, was completely covered with mosaics at that time. But a moment came when believers were dragged into this market and they were publicly executed for their faith as an example for others not to follow this new Jesus of Nazareth. From the main courtyard of the marketplace, three rows of steps led up to the colonnades where visitors could walk between the massive columns, nearly 300 of them. One side of the market was flanked by a large basilica that was 87 feet deep and 480 feet long. Each of its three floors opened on the side of the marketplace and was lined with columns. And interspersed between the columns were meticulously carved statues of gods, including the impressive sculpture of Poseidon, which today is exhibited in the Museum of Archaeology in the city of Izmir. Massive columns on the second and third levels were made from beautiful, variegated rose beige marbles and the basilica itself was built in honor of the gods with a special tribute to the emperor Marcus Aurelius and his wife Faustina. But in addition to all of that, there was a gargantuan altar to Zeus in a prime spot in the market, along with idols of Sybil, Vesta, 
Hermes, Dionysus, Eris, Heracles, and many other pagan gods. And all of these made this marketplace a prominent pagan shrine in Smyrna. And we know that believers were punished in this market and even suffered martyrdom for their faith here. Robin Lane Fox, who wrote the book Pagans and Christians, relates the story of one Christian leader who was arrested in this exact marketplace during the reign of the Emperor Decius in the year 250 AD. Three Christians walked into this marketplace not realizing at that very moment a big pagan celebration was taking place here when pagans had gathered into this place by the scores and they were offering sacrifices to the gods and to the idols. And when the Christians realized what they had stepped into, they quickly decided to walk through the crowd and get out of it as soon as possible. But when Roman authorities saw them walking through without stopping to burn incense to the god, they said, what are you doing? The emperor Decius has given an order that all pagans offer sacrifices to the gods. And when they refused because of their faith, they were arrested and taken to one of the idols in this market and were ordered to make a sacrifice to the gods. And when they did not, they were immediately brought to the Asiarch, who was the leader of this region. He was the leader of the cult of the emperor who demanded that they repent and burn incense to the gods. When they refused to burn incense, the official said, you know, of course, about the emperor's command and how the law requires you sacrifice to the gods. But the leader of the three Christians said, we also know the edicts of God and he bids us to worship him alone. But because they refused to sacrifice to the gods, it resulted in their martyrdom. That entire event took place right here in the very center of this marketplace. But that's just one episode of persecution. Many, many Christians were killed for their faith in the city of Smyrna. Some of it happened right here, and many Christians were killed for their faith in the underground arches below this site. But my friends, Christians were paraded in front of pagans. They were insulted. They were treated with vulgarities, and they were mocked. They were ordered to burn incense to the gods, which they refused to do. They had heard the word of Jesus that they were to be faithful unto death, and they were faithful even if it cost them their lives. Well, I'm seated just above the ruins of the huge theater on the slopes of Mount Pagos in Smyrna. And just on the peak of this mountain, which is Mount Pagos, is the Acropolis. And that is where we are told Alexander the Great fell asleep in the ruins of a temple when he was on a hunting expedition. At that particular time, Smyrna was located on the other side of the bay and it was fallen into dilapidation. Well, while Alexander the Great was sleeping that night in the fallen ruins of that temple on the top of this mountain, he said the God spoke to him and told him to rebuild Smyrna, but to rebuild it here. And this theater is the result of an order given by Alexander the Great to build a new Smyrna in this location. And the Smyrna that he built and the Roman Smyrna, which later followed, covered the slopes of this mountain. Now today, the theater is just being excavated. And actually, the first time that I came here, all you could see was the ruins of the stage because the rest of this was covered with houses just like the ones you see in the distance. And to excavate this place, first they had to remove all the houses and excavation right now is in full process. And one of these days, they'll be finished. And finally, 
finally exposed on this site will be a huge theater, which one time seated between 18 and 20,000 people. First, there was a Greek theater built here in the first century BC. Then it was enhanced and was expanded by the Roman emperor Tiberius. Then it was enhanced and expanded by Hadrian and finally by Marcus Aurelius. It was a massive, massive theater, again, 18 to 20,000 seats. And sitting here, spectators could look out into the Aegean Sea, but later, as was typical with all Roman theaters, there was a huge backdrop which was made of stone, and the interior side was covered with inscriptions and statues of emperors and leaders and gods. And underneath the stage area, there were seven rooms. These were used for props, for costume changes, and one room was even a toilet. Then there was the orchestra in the middle, and then all the rows of seats, which again accommodated somewhere between 18 and 20,000 people. This was a massive, massive theater on the slopes of Mount Pagos here in Smyrna. The theater had a diameter of 508 feet. It occupied a space of 139,000 square feet, and it had a stage that was 180 feet in width, large enough to facilitate large theatrical and musical performances. And like most theaters, it was semicircular. And as I told you, it had three primary sections, the stage, the orchestra, and the seats for the audience. But by the first century, what transpired on most theatrical stages was lewd. For example, public nudity and body parts were openly displayed in attempts to make the crowd laugh. What actors did on the stage was simply deplorable. They paraded themselves naked and sexually abused others on the stage. And in fact, actors and the theatrical world became so lewd and so base that actors were generally viewed to be the lower rung of society. They would do anything for the applause of a crowd. They were viewed to be hypocrites. And in fact, the Greek word hypocrite describes the mask which was worn by actors. They would wear any mask and do anything they needed to do to get the applause of the crowds. And in fact, even in this pagan dark world, actors from the theater were considered to be so low level when they died, they were not even allowed to be buried in a common grave with other people. They were buried in an actor's cemetery because they were people that would do anything, say anything for the applause of the crowd. And they were just viewed to be very disingenuous and phony. And sadly, a time came when believers in the first and second and third century were dragged onto theatrical stages just like this, where they were mocked and they were scorned by crowds that cheered with glee to see them insulted. And in fact, when you read the writings of the New Testament, you find the Greek word theatron. The word theatron describes a theater just like this. The Apostle Paul uses this word multiple times. And we also find it in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 33, where the writer of Hebrews says to his readers, you were made a gazing stock. That word gazing stock is the word theatron. It literally means you were made a theater. And those who read it understood it to mean you were dragged on the stage where you were publicly abused, you were insulted, you were mocked for people who sat in the crowd and laughed and cheered as you were insulted for your faith. But eventually a time came when believers were not just publicly mocked and insulted, they were even killed for their faith in this exact theater. The book, The Story of Civilization, Caesar and Christ says, from the time of Nero, Roman law seemed to have branded the profession of Christianity as a capital offense. But under most of the emperors, this ordinance was enforced with deliberate negligence. If accused, a Christian could usually free himself by offering incense to a statue of the emperor. Therefore, afterwards, he was apparently allowed to resume the quiet practice of his faith. The Christians who refused to do this might be imprisoned or flogged or exiled or condemned to the mines or rarely even put to death. But at Smyrna, the population demanded of the Asiarch Philip that he enforce the law and he complied by having Christians executed in the theater. 
which means Christians. Our brothers and sisters were not only mocked on this stage, they were executed for their faith right here in the ruins of the theater of Smyrna. Right now I'm seated in the underground arches of the central agora or marketplace in ancient Smyrna. We know there was a time, especially in the second half of the first century and into the second century, when Christians who refused to sacrifice to the gods in the marketplace were brought here by officials where they were beaten and many, many Christians were killed in this place. But I'm thinking about this water. This water has been running in this location nonstop for 2,000 years. And this flowing water makes me think about the huge Roman bathhouse that was connected to this marketplace. Today, the bathhouse is in ruins, but at the end of the first century and the second century, that bathhouse played a very important role in the city of Smyrna. Bathhouses in the Roman world were masterpieces of architecture. They were lavishly decorated with beautiful marbles, mosaics, hand-carved columns. They had fountains like this and statues and monuments. They often had gymnasiums, even libraries and meeting rooms for various purposes and lovely gardens where patrons strolled. And people socialized in the bathhouses with friends. They talked to their associates and they conducted business transactions and gave themselves to physical refreshment. In the book, Baths and Bathing in Classical Antiquity, we find this description of Roman baths. The universal acceptance of bathing as a central event in daily life belongs to the Roman world. And it's hardly an exaggeration to say that at the height of the empire, the baths embodied the ideal Roman way of urban life. Apart from their normal hygienic functions, they provided facilities for sports and recreation. Their public nature created the proper environment, much like a city club or community center for social intercourse varying from neighborhood gossip to business discussions. There was even a cultural and intellectual side to the baths since the truly grand establishment incorporated libraries, lecture halls, colonnades and promenades and assumed a character like the Greek gymnasium. But because Smyrna was a pagan city, immoral practices regularly occurred also in the bathhouses. And in fact, this was ordinary activity in bathhouses all over the Roman world. It was because of these immoral practices that Christians generally avoided going to the public baths. And because they avoided places like this, pagans thought there was something bizarre and strange about these Christians who lived in such isolation. And this also contributed to the persecution of believers. Among the seven churches addressed by Jesus in the book of Revelation, the congregation of Smyrna suffered the worst. This dark and perilous city was the backdrop of intense suffering by the believers in the early church. But Jesus was well aware of their faithful works, even in the midst of intense persecution. In the series, Take a Tour with Rick, Smyrna. Rick Renner walks you through the expansive archaeological sites of ancient Smyrna, a city now known as Izmir, which sits on Turkey's Aegean coast. Follow along as Rick explores the rich history of this formidable city and its application to our lives today as overcomers in Christ. This five-part documentary-style visual series is available in digital or physical format starting at just $11. We're also offering the book No Room for Compromise, a full-color, beautifully illustrated, hardbound book that will captivate you and your family for years to come on every page. 
age, Rick reveals the realities that early believers faced as the church began to flourish in a dark pagan world. With fascinating insights and historical context, you'll have a greater appreciation and understanding of Scripture and how you should interpret it for today. No Room for Compromise is available for $80. And you can also order the five-part series Christ's Message to Smyrna, starting at $11, depending on the format selected. This classic teaching is filled with relevance for the last day's church. Don't miss this special bundle, the illuminating audio video series, Take a Tour with Rick, Smyrna, the book, No Room for Compromise, and the series, Christ's Message to Smyrna. Call the number on your screen or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, where do you think I am right now? This is my old TV set. I used to teach all my programs and come to you from right here in every program, but now I'm working in the new studio because you helped us to build it and I wanna say thank you. But you may ask, well, what's gonna go on in this old studio? This old studio is being transformed into a new TV studio for our new TV network, which is called the Good News Channel. Think about that. God gave us a satellite network and a federal channel in Russia that has the potential to reach into every home. We actually have a federal license which allows us to take the signal of our network into every single home. That is just amazing. And I don't think anyone else has ever received this particular license. Only God could open a door that big. Wow. And now we're renovating the old studio. We're gonna completely change it. And from this space, we're gonna begin filming new daily TV programs for the new satellite network and the new federal channel, which is called the Good News Channel. The gospel is such good news, and we need to take it into every home. And if you're already a part of the giving team, thank you so much for being a partner. And if you're not a part of the giving team yet, please pray about being part of the giving team to help us renovate this studio and to develop our new channel so we can take it into every home of Russia, and not just Russia, but around the world, to wherever there are Russian speakers. They need the Word of God. And together with you, we can take them the light that will transform their lives. And I wanna say thank you now for being a part of our giving team. If you've never received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, now is the time for you to experience a new life Jesus has to give you. Pray this prayer with me right now. Lord, I repent of my sin and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Wash away my sin and make me completely new. I thank you that my sin is removed and Satan no longer has any right to lay claim on me. I faithfully promise that I will serve you as my Lord for the rest of my life, amen. If you just prayed the prayer of salvation with us, would you please let us know by going to renner.org forward slash salvation? We would love to connect with you. Renner Ministries is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ through every available media to the uttermost parts of the earth. Discover the many ways you can help us make a difference in lives around the world with the Word of God. We invite you to partner with us in teaching, strengthening, and rescuing lives for the glory of God. Together, we can make a difference that will last throughout eternity. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries. If that teaching helped you, would you please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.